been so amazing. Thank you. Yeah, my friends. This stuff I've never seen. Brandon Cruz wants advice. Brandon Cruz wants advice. Brandon Cruz wants advice. Brandon Cruz wants advice. You just locked yourself into the playoffs. Nice. Got it. Talk with old Brandon Cruz wants advice. Completely speechless, to say the least. Man, I am honestly so baffled by that decision. Brandon Cruz wants advice. It's Brandon wants advice. Green flag in the air. Brandon Cruz wants advice to the front. Drivers, ladies and gentlemen, it is the Brandon Cruz Daily Fantasy Podcast where I go and look at low own plays and strategies specifically designed for GPPs. This is a show for people who are already informed on daily fantasy sports and how these contests operate. If you have any questions related to the NFL or NASCAR, or let's take that NFL off. I don't do that anymore. If you have any questions related to NASCAR that you're embarrassed to ask your usual DFS provider, or if you can't find an answer anywhere else, tweet me. At Brandon Cruz at DFS. Most importantly, take everything with a grain of salt and use your best judgment when making entries initially. If you have a gambling addiction, that's not my problem. Check your sensitive feelings at the door. We are live for 2020 on the webcam. Kinda dressed up. Was gonna go buttoned up all the way, but I'm not I'm not that professional. We gotta keep it kinda cool here. Webcam is live, microphone sounding good, got all that shit audio out of the way, and uh, this is it. First actual video of 2020, breaking down the 2020 Bush Clash in this video, at least the history of it. It's a good preview video to get you started. The main video that will be breaking that down will be out on DFS Tavern this weekend. Probably be a live stream somewhere around there. We're still trying to figure out how we want to do that with the UFC, the golf, all that type of stuff. But we'll get that to you eventually. Now... Let's get right into it. I want to introduce you on how I do this, or I want to show you how I do this, really. Um, I want to get this out of the way first. I got my, I got my notes here. If you, if you notice, I always have a notepad. Um, this one's just about empty. I have stuff written down on, on each one. Um, I am very old school in how I think. Most of the time, I don't make a spreadsheet, or if I do, it, it's literally on paper. That's I'm way better with written notes, with figuring things out in my mind, um, th that's where my strength is. My, my strength is not, or, um, my weakness is, is, you know, making spreadsheets, doing all, I don't have the time for that. Um, a lot of things that I want to analyze for football, things of that nature, I can either find online on different websites or through different spreadsheets. Now, speaking of that, uh, there's only two, sp <laughs> there's only two sheets that I, I, I see worth buying for the NASCAR season. And I know, um, this isn't necessarily an ad, but uh, DFS Tavern, we have our own uh, spreadsheet. Anzo, um, he, he's confirming me that he's going to continue that going on, or he's going to continue updating that and making that um, this year. Uh, it, it'll just be a bit later than it used to come out because he, I'll, I'll be focusing on the NASCAR stuff. He'll be doing the PGA stuff. He'll be doing UFC. He'll, he'll just be updating the that sheet later. Uh, especially with all the practices and the randoms, things like that. But we, DFS Tavern will still have a spreadsheet. The other spreadsheet that, I, that I've that i used in the past and that I like, I like the spreadsheet, I like the person a lot. Uh, Race for the Prize, Pierce over there, no longer with anyone. He's just an independent creator over there. Uh, I have a lot of respect for, for Pierce in that, in that sheet. I mean, I, I don't see a reason to go anywhere else. I don't see a reason to pay for, for a sheet anywhere else. Um... I mean, really, the guys from DFS Tavern and Pierce are the only guys I, I really have respect for in the DFS industry. Uh, we're not trying to rip people off. We're not we're not making drama, or uh, we're we're not some shady business that that does any of that. Anyway, I just want to get that out of the way. So I don't I don't use spreadsheets. A lot of my a lot of my notes, whether it's for videos, weekends. Um, I I mean, I used to draw the ownership that I had. I at least moved that onto the computer this year, but. I, I spend a lot of time in, in notepads, on pens, just writing things down. That's that's how I do my best um, analysis, my best preparation for for, di for daily fantasy sports, for any sport. So I just want to get that out of the way. Um, so when you don't see that when when you don't see that I don't have my own sheet or anything like that, I do. But I, it's like poker. I can't give you that. I, I have. I have uh, everything in notepads and notebooks, but I do have my notes on here, so we'll we'll continue on from there. Just want to get that out of the way. Uh, 18 drivers will be in this year's clash. There was 20 drivers that were able or that could possibly make this, but they are not going to do that because they cannot find rides. Uh, 
Daniel Hamrick was um, he had the option to run this, but he doesn't have a ride anymore. And then Daniel Suarez was locked into this event as well, but he doesn't have a ride for this. I mean, he does, but Gaunt Brothers Racing are they're, they're struggling to put together cars for the Super Speedway Speed Weeks at Daytona and uh, the West Coast Swing. I mean, they are small. They are they're a small team. They have a lot of. Um, a lot of issues ahead of them not saying they're poor or anything but they just don't have a lot of sponsorship a lot of money they got to conserve those cars they need to play it safe and uh so Suarez will not be there although he could have made this race because he was qualified in so the 18 guys that'll be racing this race will be kurt bush brad keselowski austin dillon Dick, kevin harvick ryan newman chase elliott eric Almarola, denny hamlin ryan blaney Clint Boyer, Kyle Busch, Martin Trix Jr., Eric Jones, Joey Logano, William Byron, Kyle Larson, Jimmy Johnson, and Alex Bowman. Also, I will get this off me in a second. I'll, I'll, I'll show you my my desktop. I just want to do this right now because I don't have anything really to show you here. I expect this video to probably be around 20 minutes long. Hopefully, I can get it in under that, but we're going we're gonna to continue there. Now, um, the way that I'm going to approach this race, and this is how I did it last year, and, and I've used different strategies. I've been playing fantasy sports since I turned 18 in Texas. That was a few years ago. I turned 22 this May, so that's dating all you old guys watching this race. But um, this is how I'm approaching this this race here. There's I'm, I'm approaching the speedways purely in an ownership game this year. That's how I'm, that's how I'm preparing to go about it. That's how I will go about it. Um, and, and I'll, I'll get into my madness here. First and foremost, or I want to get this out of the way as well. For the Clash, or for Speed Weeks in general, I'm probably throwing down... I haven't decided if I'm going to do 400 or 600. I'm going to see how the Clash and the Duels go before I before I want to throw more money in into the trucks, Xfinity and Cup Series. But um, the Daytona 500, I will max entry either the the 25 cent or the dollar maybe even the 50 cent um one there i, I really want to enter 150 lineups for the 500 this year um i want to do the same thing for the xfinity although it might it'll be a bit harder because they qualify that same day um, but i want to max enter a lot so i'm going to be playing everybody um i'm getting that out of the way now i i, I don't really like how some people have done it in the past where they're like well what do you think of this guy blah 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 and they're like well i'm playing everybody so i have an opinion so uh, whenever I say I like someone, that that's me actually liking them. I, I enjoy how they race. I, I think they can actually do something. But be aware, I am playing everybody. Uh, for the Clash, the Duels, most likely the 500 as well. Every, every driver who starts that race will be in a lineup of mine. Just telling you that right now. So this Clash, 18 cars, I'm playing everybody. Telling you that right now. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we're going to play... I, I'm... I'm taking on this race in an ownership perspective focusing on where the ownership's going to be where people are going to make their lineups how people are going to make their lineups if there's any big names in the back that people are going to gravitate to that happens a lot um i took advantage of that last year in the last two races of the year the daytona race that haley won which also this is i think I'm, I'm more tilted by this than anything i think that's that's why i'm playing everybody haley and I think maybe four other guys were the only people I didn't play in the Summer Daytona race. Kicking myself for that. Talladega played mostly everybody. Made off with a, a little good profit there. Um, so most of the strategies that people play here. They're the 6 for 6. I don't know if I want to look at the camera. I don't know if I want to look at there. I'm already looking at the notes. So I'm looking at you right now. Um, most people do either the 6 for 6, 5 for 6, 4 for 6, or 3 for 6. What are these? Well, the 6 for 6 is what I call the play drivers in the back. Um, I'm not going to waste your time on this because everybody's beating this to death with the stick. I mean, this horse, it's just a leg left. This dead horse has been beaten with every bat everybody's ever brought. So, play drivers in the back. We'll get that out of the way. You won't hear me say that again. Uh, the 5 for 6 is where you play 5 guys from the back, 1 guy anywhere else in the field. 4 is what I usually do. I usually play 4 guys from the back, 2 guys spread out throughout the field. And then there's the 3 for 6 where you know half your lineup is from the back, half is spread out. Now, entering these types of races with these types of lineups, you got to remember that safest doesn't mean that it's going to win you money. The safest, I mean, guaranteed place to not lose your points, DraftKings points that is, or FanDuel, whatever you're gonna, wherever you're going to play it at, uh, that's playing guys from the back. So if you play the bottom six guys, the 18th through 
uh, 13, those guys, they cannot lose you any points. If you play anybody up in the front, they can get you points, but they can lose you a lot more. And ending with, you know, 20 DK points for last place finish is better than negative 3, better than 4, better than negative 25, you know? So, I go into this purely in a, in a, I gotta get away from people, I gotta make lineups that people won't have, gotta try and win it all myself, I don't wanna tie with anybody. This clash is probably gonna be the hardest race to not split with anyone only because there's 18 cars. The duel should have at least 23, 22 cars in each race, uh, and then everybody, all the other ones are actually full field. So, this will be the toughest one to not tie on. Now, where does the ownership and go. Let me bring up this picture here. Where is it here? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to my my desktop here. Let me get this out of the way now. I made these last year. Um, I made these last year. They were in my Talladega ownership um, video last year, which is probably what I'll start doing for the plate tracks. One, I love plate tracks. Let me get that out of the way first off. Uh, I hate NASCAR. <laughs> My driver, Tony, man, he's in the Hall of Fame. I got no dog in the race anymore. Watching this purely and doing this purely for money. Uh, but I made this last year, breaking down what I what I expected to be a dual uh, race, for an example. Obviously, this is it's neither here nor there because there's only 18 cars in the uh, clash this year, most likely more in the duels. But this is my, my basic breakdown of where the people go to make ownership. I understand it's a bit soft. It's just a estimate for me from what I've seen. I, I changed it up a bit to fit the 18 drivers that we're going to see in the dual race. Now, it could go up or down. It could be a bit higher, a bit lower. This is just a visual representation of what I think it's going to happen. I think the, the, I didn't change I think third through seventh from that 20. I don't really know what to do with this ownership, um, but I think it'll be somewhere around here. Obviously, 18th through 13th, your highest owned drivers. Now, I think that's what everybody's going to do, regardless of who they are. Um, that That's that's what you play here. That's how you, you do the clash. That's how you play these guys. Um, I just realized you might not be able to see um, this. I might have my, my camera there. Yeah, let me, oh, whatever. Uh, let me see what it looks like here. Yeah, actually, it's, let me let me knock that off right fast. Um, so this is what I think the ownership should be around for the clash. Um, obviously, back of the pack, heavy stacked. Uh, probably whoever starts on first, if it's a driver that most people think can actually lead some laps, uh, it's going to carry ownership. The dead zones here are going to be fourth through seventh. I think that's going to be no man's land. I think that's where you want to go if you want to be different. It's not safe. I'm Obviously, it's not safe. This is my podcast. I don't focus on safe plays, but that's where I'm going to really try and, and get my lineups to be different, focusing on probably from 10th to 3rd. I think that's going to be a lot of ownership, or there's not going to be a lot of ownership there versus stuff in the back. Now, uh, let me go back to my camera because you got you got to you got to show the camera, Brandon. You got to show it now. That's how that's how everybody's got to make uh, fantasy content now. Um, I'll leave this up there so you can kind of see about it. I'm going to go back to, folk, actually. And, uh, yes, you could make hotkeys, so I don't have to keep going to OBS and changing this, but uh, I use this computer to play games on, too. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't really want to have a whole lot of hotkeys because I have hotkeys for other games. I'll most likely hit something. The last thing I want to do is start streaming randomly one night when I'm playing Arma shirtless. Uh, <laughs> like that, That's not what I want to focus on. So, uh I'll be doing it by by the mouse. Um, anyway, um, focusing on ownership, one thing that you really need to think about is do you need a lap leader? Now, it's, it's rather difficult to really predict who's going to lead the most laps in these races. One, because they're just drawn randomly. If they still do it like they used to do it, when it was the Budweiser shootout, well, it might actually go back because it's, it's the Bush clash. Um, but back in the day, back when NASCAR was NASCAR, they used to have a stage, you know, it'd be the speed stage or whatever. It'd be live on speed channel and the drivers would take a, uh, they'd take a beer bottle and they'd pull out a number and that's where they would start. So you basically just pill draw, uh, for wherever you want to start. Now you can do two things with this one. You can just not even give a shit about practice time, which I would suggest you do. There's not a whole lot of things you can really learn from practice. Um, or you can just focus on where people start. I'm going to be focused on where people start. The practice time that I want to look at, it's not really time exactly. I want to see, I visually want to see what the cars look like. 
So praying that Fox brings more than four cameras to the racetrack this year, uh, we can actually see what the cars do in hold on, in in a pack in the field. Obviously, I'm going to be doing things with my hands right here. I want to see how these cars draft, how they pull up, if they're loose, if they're tight. I want to visually see that type of stuff happening. Um, I'm I'm really hoping that the broadcast does something. That's really the only thing in practice that I really care about for um for the clash for the duels uh or at least for these guys because all these cars are top tier uh drivers now let me bring this out here uh everybody has sponsors they're all running the 2020 vehicles the chevrolets i mean they they kind of fix their nose i, I want to see what that does they say they you still can't really line them up that well but if it's a little bit flatter than what it used to be it's probably going to be better um Let's see. Oh, yes, yes, lap leader. So do you need a lap leader for this race? Not necessarily. Why do I say that? Well, <laughs> the data the data backs it up to where, you yes, you, you need a lap leader, but you don't need a lap leader when the leader wrecks. So let's go down and break down these races of what happened each year, starting with 2019 last year. Um, and, and I'll actually show some stuff over here, but I'm just going to be looking on here on my little notes here. So in 2019, did you need the lap leader in the uh, ultimate lineup? No, you did not. Why is that? Well, uh, the race last year, and this is going to be a breakdown of the race to answering this question as well. The race last year was very single file, very boring. Uh, there, was a, there was a heavy chance of rain. They were basically racing in, in fog, uh, inclement weather, um, you know, I mean, it, it was a pretty shit-tastic race. Single file up until, well, there's rain coming, guys. We got to start pushing. Um, and when they started pushing, they, they end up wrecking. That's when Jimmy Johnson went and took uh, Paul Menard out in the 20 car. Now, why is that important? Paul Menard led 51 laps, ladies and gentlemen. He started on the pole, led 51 laps, finished 13th. That kind of killed... The whole lineup there. He ended up losing 12 place differentials or place places, and, and had a negative 12 place differential for that race there. So no, 2019, you did not need the lap leader. Now 2018, yes, you did. It was single file ish. Um, let's see. There was a one car crash early in the race. That was pretty much it. It and Pinsky dominated the whole race. They pretty much ran one, two, three, four the entire time your lap leader with the most laps led was brad kozlowski your eventual winner so yes you did need the lap leader in that race 2017 no you did not it was single file ish um there was a one car wreck early the 48 and the 41 car this is back when uh jimmy johnson and canals were realizing you know we can't do it like we used to we actually need to build a setup to support the car so it doesn't just spin out um this was the beginning of the end for that because uh, the 48 got loose I think it was on lap like 35 or something um, and ended up taking no maybe it was earlier in the race I don't remember anyway he got loose took out Kurt Busch um, and then after that it was pretty much just the 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 end of segment one and the 48 wrecked again and then they wrecked uh, later in the race and um, it was single file ish. Then you got to about the last twenty laps. That when it that's when it started getting wild. That's when they started racing. That's when they started actually passing well. Then you had that bullshit finish that I'm still angry about when Denny Hamlin blocked Keselowski and just fucked so many lineups there. Uh, but no, you did you did not need the the lap leader in the 2017 race. 2016, yes ish, uh, but this is I really want to focus on. 2017, 2018, 2019. Why is that? Because 2016 back is when there was more cars in the race, when NASCAR is trying to shove, just shove more cars in this event. Um, so there's 25 cars in the race, but only 16 finished. Um, they were double file pretty much the entire race, at least two lanes. But there was more crashes, more excitement. Uh, I don't think we're going to see that this year. And then in 2015, well, actually, let me see. Uh, 2016, your lap leader... Uh, it was Denny Hamlin who ended up winning the race with 39 laps led, and then Keselowski with 26 laps led. Uh, and then 2015, yes, you did need the lap leader, but that's only because they ended up winning the race. And when I say they, it was Matt Kenseth and Drex Jr. leading 21 and 28 laps respectively there. In that race, 25 cars started, 12 finished. They had a big wreck there 
Uh, but this was one of the last races with their quote unquote low downforce package all the way back in, in 2015. Um, so yes, you want to try and get the lap leader, but if you, if, if that lap leader wrecks, you don't need him. Uh, I, I know that's kind of like, duh, don't you know that? But I mean, that's how it's going to be. Uh, I also want to bring this up right fast. Let's, uh, let's go back to this here and let's look back what is this, 19. Let's look back in the last five finishes here. I'm just going to let it play. And I want to show you the bullshit that we need to predict. Like I said, 2015, 25 cars in the race, and it was just this group of individuals here. This is how the race ended. You know, all you had to do was survive the chaos. Look at that. 13th back out of the race. The, I mean, really all it is, gentlemen, is, is we're trying to predict who doesn't crash. What happens here and there? 2016, this was the last part of the race here taking the white flag i mean all we have to do is is pick who doesn't wreck if you have one of these guys you're fucked you got it i mean yes i love plate tracks yes i've done very well at them but they take a shitload of luck that's why i'm just gonna max enter everything uh let's go back to 2017 actually let me pause that make sure Let's go back to 2017. This is how this race ended. This bullshit block. Enter in turn one and two. Hamlin had the lead. Just block late. Took those two out. So a lot of the field had the two and 11. They ended up losing positions there. A lot of people had the 11 too. Uh, he was the lap leader. He was the one who had led the most laps, but he ended up wrecking. This is how this race finished. Um, and I'm showing you this because a lot of people don't go back and look at how these races finished. I go back and watch the whole damn thing. <laughs> Uh, I know I'm a bit overkill there. Um, yeah, let's fast forward this one up a little bit. But as I said, this this race, as we get closer and closer to what I expect to see this weekend, we get a single file race until it's one to go, and then people start trying to make make moves. Uh, but the two cars are pretty much going to break away here and there. Um, you know. Like, oh, wow, Ho hope you didn't have Kyle Larson there. Hope you didn't have Jimmy Johnson there, you know. Uh, let's look at last year's finish. Oh, actually, well, this is, this is why I had a part here. So let's see. Single file the whole way. Then it was like, rain is coming, gentlemen. Drivers, we got to make moves. We got to go. And then, I mean, Jimmy Johnson made a move. Uh, and, and, I mean, I most lineups had drivers who were who were wrecking here. Uh, thank God the 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 it started raining, so we didn't lose any laps there. So some of the guys who continued on really didn't gain a whole lot of positions there. But you know, your your, your driver is gonna be in a wreck. I'm gonna tell you that right now. It's it's gonna be one of those situations where people get dumped, people get wrecked, and um, we we just gotta pick who doesn't do that now. <sighs> As I said, I'm going to focus on ownership. I'm going to imagine that this is how the ownership breaks down. Right, right here, coming coming out a few days um, or a few days away from this type of race. I gotta, at least for me personally, you can do it whatever way you want. For me personally, I gotta figure out where the ownership's gonna be and where to pivot off of that. If I let's say let's let's say I enter a hundred lineups because I think that's close to what I'll do for this race. If I enter a hundred lineups, it's really easy. So then I can break down their ownership percentages there. So I'm not going to type this one. This is just a picture that I that I have for you. But let's say let's say that the driver starting dead last has carries 83 percent of the ownership. I'll most likely fade him. I'm not going to do a hard fade. I always find it difficult to do a hard fade on on any position. But oh man, my my, my dog's coughing over there. Um. But I would probably only have him about 20% 20, 20 of the lineups to get a huge leverage on the field by just not playing the car that starts last. I'd probably be more heavy on 16th, uh, 15th, 17th, 14th, and 13th. Those would probably be where my back markers would really, really start to consider. And it'd probably end up being maybe 15th and probably 14th through 16th is where a vast majority of my cars in the back are going to be and uh, that's not me giving the lineup away um that's just how i think it's going to be now a lot of people uh tend to follow big names like i said going into it starting the video or i mean 
I, I hope it's this one. I, I recorded this once, and I didn't like how it looked, so I don't know if I if I mentioned this before. Entering this weekend, Kozlowski, Logano, um, Hamlin, Paul, uh, Ryan Blaney, and Kyle Busch. Those are my five fav- favorites going into this race. I imagine that those names are going to carry more ownership than most. I imagine that people like William Byron, uh, Eric Jones, because he finished last last year, um, Eric Almarola, Ryan Newman. I'd imagine th- maybe Alex Bowman as well. I imagine those guys to carry the least amount of ownership of these guys, regardless of where they start. Um, really, what I would what I would like is I would like Keslowski to start in the back, Harvick to start in the back, Elliott, Hamlin, Blaney. Um, Probably, I'd want and Logano. I I would love it if those guys would start, you know, twelfth on back. Then, uh, you get the stigma out of the way that people are going to own these guys based on their name and their starting position. Then people get really hesitant, especially if say if if Eric Jones is starting fourth, if if uh, if Austin Dillon is starting third, if William Byron is starting sixth. That's the type of situation I really want to see because a lot of people won't won't have the guts to. Put those names in on a lineup. Um, yes, I I could go on and on about well, playing drivers in the back can give you more points. It's the safest, it's the safest way to go. It's been proven time and time again. Yes, but that strategy has been out for years now, ever since the racing came onto the fantasy scene, and uh, a lot of people are, are are on that. And now people just like I said, start drivers in the back in each race. Can't do that anymore. I, you got to play it differently, and I think the way to do it um, is four guys from the back and two guys from anywhere else, and probably I'd probably lean more on four guys from the back and then two guys probably starting sixth or better. Um, obviously, that's a much riskier lineup, but that, I think that's that's the way to go about it. That, that's the way to attack this type of slate. That's the way to attack this type of ownership, and that's the way to attack this type of GPP. Uh, I have no idea how long this video went. I lost, I didn't know what time I started. Uh, but that's my first big breakdown. That's how I'm approaching this race. I don't give a fuck about the names. don't give a shit about where they start. I'm playing the ownership game. That's how I'm attacking the clash. Uh, that's my strategy. And that's how it is. Gentlemen, thank you for... Or ladies, whatever. The, the, I mean, there's only like six people watching this damn video anyway. So, uh, and, and four of them are from DFS Tavern because I posted the link in there. Uh, but guys, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to this year. Um, obviously, when we get to the the quote unquote real races outside of Speed Weeks, Phoenix, things of that nature, I'll start breaking down why I like people guy or why I like uh, people based on track history, all that type of stuff. I don't really. I, I don't really want to focus on track history a whole lot anymore on plate tracks. These cars are bullshit. The package is bullshit. The racing is bullshit. It don't fucking matter no more. We are playing the ownership game. That's how I'm going to look at it. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. And I appreciate it. I look forward to making videos every week for you. Let me know if you like my, my shirt. If you want to see my NASCAR shirts, don't really know. Don't really care. Uh, don't really know what to do in this situation. But thank you guys very much. Follow me on Twitter, Brandon Cruz. DFS, you're already on the YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe. Um, check out DFS Tavern. Let me do that right fast. I'm going to do that. Let me just... Um, I'm going to bring up DFS Tavern. not going to go through because you got to be paying for this through Patreon, but pretty much all I'm doing is just posting on the NASCAR thing or, the, or a little NASCAR channel there. If you got any questions, I'll be pretty much owning this stupid channel later uh we post nba content pga content and no lie not doing this just because i i'm making content for dfs tavern now but this month for pga just going off the spreadsheet that anzo makes i'm doing great dude i've never cashed this much in in golf before i'm not even a golf fan uh so just check us out you know dfs tavern patreon the dfs tavern main youtube channel uh, that's where a lot of our stuff is going to be this year. And thank you guys very much for, for watching yet again. Sorry I'm wasting your time, but uh, I'm looking forward to this year. Thank you for, for listening. I'll catch you later.